Daryl and Jesse are making steady progress with our Grant tank restoration. In this video, we give you another update on the project and unbox some goodies that have just arrived. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. In the last episode, Daryl repaired this 37mm shell rack. Since then, he's been hard at work on some other internal pieces. Jesse has also been busy fabricating and fitting engine components in preparation for our mechanic Ryan to move in and wire everything up. One of the parts that was holding up progress has been the radiator. It turns out that the one we had earmarked for the project was too badly damaged to use, so one had to be sourced from the radiator shop here in Cairns. It recently arrived and Jess is putting the finishing touches on the brackets for it. Is there anything that we don't have today? We'll have to go get one. Goes like that. And then they connect to make one big thing. He's also just finished the accelerator linkages, which were a bit of a challenge. Um, so since the last episode, we obviously finished mounting the uh, platform with the accelerator pedal. So I've had to work out a rough design of how I wanted to get it back to the engine bay. So that's where the 16 mm rod attaches to the clevis that I've made on the linkage. So that threads into there and then runs back and then feeds into this bulkhead here through a hole down here. It runs through that bulkhead and comes onto my first join. My first join's here. Um, the reason why I've got a join here is because I needed to put like a retention spring to allow the pedal to pull back after you've pushed it forward. I've got multiple springs uh, on the platform here and on the engine. The next join starts here and then goes up and then we had to go around our engine uh, mounts. So I've had to put a 90 bend here, come across, and then another 90 bend going that way. I just had this block temporary welded on just so I got the height right. Yeah. So that would be knocked off eventually. It feeds onto another joiner. Uh, Further up, there's another joiner there. Is that it there? Yeah, with two nuts on either side. Yep. So that's our last jo joiner. And then it feeds into the linkage, which then rotates it going upwards. That pulls up this way, through here, and comes across onto this, which pulls this around, which pushes this linkage forward. Which, once this comes forward, it goes onto the actual accelerator throttle and moves it forward, back and forward. Two Heim joints on either side. They've got like an inner that allows it to flex and rotate either way. It won't bind up. We've got no chance of it binding up ever because it allows it to move back and forth. We've um, managed to get a radiator that's a pretty good size for what we want. We had the guys come out and measure up and pretty much find us the closest size to fitting in our hole. Our spacing's 1500 by 500. He's managed to get us one 1300 by, I think, he, he made it a little bit bigger, but that's not that big of a deal. We managed just to lower it. Pretty good for us, really. Like, we didn't have to make outrageous brackets or anything. I've just had to bend up some four mil brackets in the press. Our outlet's coming out of our thermostats. Um, we've only got the one inlet into the radiator, so I had to make a custom hose set up to go into that. So I, I managed to get 60 mil aluminium pipe. These are the 90s that I had to make. So it's just two 90s. This comes on, comes up, across. And then I had to bore a hole for a T-piece. So and then you've got, you know, that coming out of your T-piece onto another 45 and another 45, so a 90, which comes across, and then again, another 45 and another 45 into a 90 into the uh, inlet of the radiator. So with, the, with this radiator, because our back deck is a solid piece and it runs through to about here, once the vehicle's, you know, all put back together, we won't be able to access this radiator. So they haven't put a, uh, a cap on top. So what we've got to do is we've made a header tank. So we've got the outlet coming through here and around. Again, this is just 90s around the corner and comes through our bracket. This will fall down on the angle. Once I've got a joiner, I'll join these. So I didn't get one like custom made or anything. It was just off the shelf. So I've got to uh, put a cut on either one of them and join them, which I've got to do. I just forgot to get the joiner piece when I was in town. <laughs> so I'll have to do that. So that comes down on the fall and into, bottom, into the bottom of this aluminium header tank that I've had to custom make. So this was originally for fuel. So I've just modified it. So that works right in there now. And you can actually get to the filler cap for a header tank. 
And this is the, the top of the radiator cap, which is on our header tank. So you just undo that clip, pull it around, pull it up, and you can fill it. And then once it's filled, put the cap back on, twist it around, put that cap in, pull that out, put that down, done. Like a bought one. So that will give us access to filling our radiator on uh, Armourfest and when we've got it driving around, if we need to do any quick maintenance to it, it's just the easiest way. So the outlet on this was 60 mil. The inlet on our motor was 70 mil. I went to our local aluminium supplier and there's no such thing as 70 mil pipe. There's 60 and then I think you can get 77.5 or something like that. Just decided I would use 60 mil pipe. I'd cut it in half and add a slither on either side, re-weld it back together. And then after I had done that, it was 70 mil. Then I had to cut heaps of little slithers and taper it and make my own reducer. So once it 90s across, it comes across here and then it 90s back up again and then 90s across again. We've got a little bit of room in here and what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna put some thermo fans in to get all the hot air out of our engine bay. These will all have to be all covered in and filled and then I'll have to make up uh, like a bit of a frame um, to support these three thermo fans that Ryan's managed to source for us. So they're, they're pretty big, so there'll be one probably about here, one in the middle and then one over here and that should suck enough air out and, and keep it cool enough in there so we don't get any overheating or anything like that. Also because we're mounting this radiator straight on top of where our um, exhaust outlets are. Got to put a 90 degree bit of angle line and a bit of flat plate underneath the radiator and on top of these and I'll have to insulate it. It shouldn't, shouldn't affect it at all. Should, shouldn't affect it one little bit. Meanwhile, Daz has been working on the internal components. And then we've got a basket of bits and pieces that we're sifting through trying to work out what's original grant and what isn't it. And then I come across a lid that I identified, it sits just behind the driver's seat, so we had the lid. So it's a double action lid, folds back. So uh, You only had the lid? Yeah, yeah, just had the lid. So you can see it's a little bit corroded and a bit iffy. But yeah, from the lid we were able to replicate the rest of it to... Uh, it's a toolbox or a storage box that just sits in behind the driver. You'll see it in position when the whole tank goes together. Were you able to copy off the other one that we had? Yeah, we have another one. That's where I got the, the, the basic design and shape of it. But this would have been a complete full box going down. But because of our different size drive shaft we're using, we've uh, had to modify it. Oh, this, this is another thing we've had to replicate. It's a water tank, though, because they could be in the tank for you know, a couple of days under combat conditions. They had a, a fairly large water tank to keep them uh, hydrated. Jeez, that's not much. But, well, plus they had the water bottles as well. There's a, uh, you'll see it later on, there's a holder for water bottles in the turret guard. Ah, oh, yeah, we'll check so. it out. We'll check it out in a sec. Yeah. So starting with this uh, baby change table. Yeah, yeah, that's the baby change table, yeah. Uh, it's basically just a, a seat come storage area for ammunition for the 30 cals, but because the 30 cals were taken out, it became like a spare seat. It goes just to the uh, left-hand side of the driver. Yeah. Where the 30 cals would have been mounted. You can see them on the, the tank Oh, where, the, where they're welded over. Yeah, they had twin 30 cals originally when they came out. A guard on the uh, oil cooler. And then we've got a couple of fire extinguisher uh, mounting clamps. There's two large fire extinguishers mounted on the left-hand side below the turret. And that's for the fire suppression unit for in the, uh, the vehicle. Is this, have we just got this in or is this from up the farm down? Oh, this is stuff that we got from up the storage uh, uh, place we've got. And I'm just sifting through it, see if I can identify it. Some of this stuff isn't Grant stuff, like I think that's Stuart or uh, Staghound. But this part's Grant. This goes behind the uh, turret and it's a uh, vent going into the, for the uh, auxiliary motor, I think that's for the turret. So that'll be cleaned up and used. These other bits we're just sifting through, but then you come across bits like this for stabiliser, firing on and off. So I think that's something to do with the 75mm gun, so I'll have to do a bit more research on that and see if we can use that. Looks like a firing switch. Once again, I'm not sure if this is off a grant or not, but it's got a protected firing switch, so... Okay. We'll just keep sifting through it, see what we've got. These little tins and that, are they ammo tins? Well, some of them are, but yeah, once again, I've still got to identify some of them and see, see if they're usable. 
Uh, these ones are painted silver, I'm thinking might have come out of modern uh, British tanks because silver was their internal colour later on, yeah, right. whereas white is the normal one for Americans. Yep, yep, we've got some things sent up from a good friend of ours down in Victoria. And uh, yeah, it's like Christmas is happening. <laughs> this is, what's under here is you will, won't see very often. This is only fitted to Australian tanks, Grants and your Ambers, so. All right, let's have a look. Let's unpack it and have a good look. This is an armoured guard for the transmission on the front. Wait, an armoured guard? What do you it, mean? It's an extra additional bolt-on piece of armour. The, uh, the Australians looked at them, I think, towards the end of World War II and saw that a lot of damage was happening to the, the fronts of them and we designed a uh, front armour piece that bolts on. This, uh, this is upside down. This is actually the top. So there's a hole here, hole here and one at the bottom. And what we can do, we can show you on the tank the actual mounting points. We've got one original mounting point and where the other two have been cut off, oxy cut off by the farmers. That's an incredible piece, yeah. yeah. Hey, what, what are these? Well, as we were mentioning about whether or not we're going to put, uh, fill up some of our ammunition racks, someone's already done the hard work again. Once again, our friend, he's already had these cast out of aluminium. So we'll tidy these up, give them a bit of a paint job. And they're 37 mil ballistic capped armor piercing rounds. Is there enough to fill our racks up? Oh, no. <laughs> now, these things are pretty hungry for ammunition. I think there's something like 100 odd. Well, it looks like here we may uh, have 50. Oh, I'm, not a, I'm not certain yet. Oh, well, it's representative of uh, being yeah. in battle for, uh, for a few days. That's it. Yep. Yeah, nice one. Got another pallet here. It's got some goodies in it I can spot already, but I'll just cut it open and we'll have a good look at it. Oh, yeah, that's. That's the front of our, our 37 mil gun. We didn't have that, so we need that. That's going to make life easy. Wait, uh, oh, in the turret? Yeah, it goes in the uh, turret. So that's the mantlet for the 37? Yeah, the front mantlet for the 37, yeah. Looks like we've got the proper dash for our, for our model tank. The one we got in there is for the radial, and it has like the magneto fitted in here and, and built out a bit. This is the proper one for a, uh, a twin diesel. Like the one we got, the welded hull would have been. That's um. So it needs a bit of panel beating. Seen better days, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. This is the little auxiliary fuel tank that goes up in the uh, corner over there. You can see it through there. You can see where the fuel cap filler is. Yep. And that's uh, to run the little generator that powers the the turret and everything. We don't have door handles on our doors here, so he's he's had these manufactures. So the three part there, pivot. And that'll just slide that that tongue backwards and forwards when it pivots. It's very hard to see. It doesn't look like they've ever had locks fitted. So whether these are new old stock doors at one stage. Oh, like a factory floor sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So that'll get mounted there. We'll have a bit of fun drilling through the armour plate, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> so they're handy. Because we didn't have parts, some parts, and it's very hard to replicate, he sent up. Uh, this whole piece so we can copy and use this to make a template for the the hold open latch for the rear deck doors engine cover hold open strut thank you pardon me back at this pallet well i just just glanced over and noticed that this is sitting up on something and i don't know what that is underneath there i'm just going to drag this out to see what what is this oh it's a big bit <laughs> It's the side of a turret, a bit of side of a turret by the look at that. Does that look like an inspection? Right, rear, uh, left rear side of a Churchill turret. This is the remains of the only Mark IV Churchill tank A22 shipped into Australia for trials and testing during World War II. Finally being destroyed as a target on the Puckapunyal Army tank firing range in Victoria. What a neat little piece. Yeah, like. We've got some really nice blown up bits of armour and that in the museum and this is, this is going to be great. I'm not sure that, that could be the bottom, I don't know which is the top or bottom on it. Heavily armoured isn't it? Oh yeah, Churchill's. I don't know if you're into it, you can see where farmers have obviously need bits and pieces so they cut out the shapes they want out of everything. Oh they've just hacked away at it. Yeah, so you know, save going down to the local hardware store that won't have what you want, you just cut up a bit of armour. Cut up a bit of armour. This is 
the uh, safety guard for the turret. We're going to just throw the bulkheads in the back there, quickly bolt them in place, the new bulkheads that we've made, and then fit this in there because we need to find the mounting point for this end here. We have two mounting points already to the fixed features in the tank itself. It's just on our new bulkhead, we have to find the locating point for that. So. Great. I know it was only a short episode, but the final stages of the build are going to be really fun to watch. We're working towards the engine startup and the first test drive, so keep an eye out for the next Grant restoration video in a few weeks' time. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.